I was told to speak about SRM University and the hostel experience that I had in 2010. It was one of the most dreaded experiences of my entire life. So I have not shared it for the first time. Of course, I have shared it in bits, but this is the first time I make, I'm making a video regarding this. Because uh, so many people have asked me that, what was your situation like when you went to the hostel? So uh, in 2010, I had moved uh, to Chennai from Gohati, Assam, India. And I uh, was a student of software engineering there. And I stayed in staff quarters. So the staff quarters is a place which is like, as the name suggests, staff quarters. It's not for the students, it's for the staff. But uh, there was no place in the hostel. For us, uh, like the hostel rooms would be one room uh, where uh, three people would stay or two people would stay. Uh, but the staff quarters were a bit unique. They were like three BHK apartments where our teachers would stay. And uh, in our case, uh, we were completely uh, like the whole building, all the two buildings, staff quarters, it was filled with students. And in every like uh, every room within that three BHK, there was like two or three students. So uh, in my uh, in my apartment, rather, <laughs> now there were around nine to ten people almost, right? So three of us used to be, four of us would, would be in the hall. Uh, there were two halls, so two, two, four, and other rooms are uh, two each. So, uh, so it's like six in the rooms and four in both the halls. So it's like ten people. Uh, sometimes more guys would come and stay, and sometimes one of them would not stay there. One or two of them. So, average out ten guys in the apartment. Now, uh, the thing is, uh, it was a very uh, different experience because. I had never stayed in any hostel uh, when I was in Guwahati, but then I ended up staying with uh, nine more people. And the situation was very pathetic there. Uh, it was a very miserable situation because um, all sorts of trouble. You name it and it's there. One of the guys, uh, he was a uh, he was a drug dealer. He was the head of drug dealing of entire SRM University. I hope it's still not there. <laughs> All these drug rackets. So he was from the uh, city of Gwalior in India. And he uh, would uh, not go to the college. He would never have any attendance. But um, he would be uh, indulging in all kinds of drugs. And then he would uh, come and give drugs to all of us also. <laughs> but luckily, uh, none of the other members in my room, they had, they, none of them had taken drugs actually. So uh, the good thing was that uh, the other guys were not taking drugs. But that's not it. They were taking so many other things, right? <laughs> which, uh, which ended up making the situation the same actually, or maybe even worse. And so this guy from Gwalior, he would come and make some drugs and uh, this uh, ganja and all these things. And he would put some water over it and he would go and give it to other people. Hey, would you have, would you like to have this juice? He would say in Hindi, juice piega kya? <laughs> so drugs mixed with, uh, I mean, not just uh, the ganja, but so many other drugs, which he had, you know, you would mix all this with water and he would be like, juice pile, energy mile. <laughs> you gain energy. Now, why am I telling this story? Not because it was a horrific incident and I'm just sharing, but the thing is, uh, these incidences help me to uh, become more spiritual eventually. And then this guy, he had a roommate and he was from the city of Agra in India, which has this Taj Mahal in Agra, India, Uttar Pradesh. So uh, this guy was a very peculiar guy. He was like 
any time he speaks a sentence the beginning and the ending is with a slang word the slang is it will have something to do with either your mother or your sister <laughs> or maybe with you right so uh, whenever he used to speak that's like the beginning and the end and in between every phrase he would use three four slangs so every statement minimum five to six slangs he would be using and he was the roommate of this guy who used to give drugs so as i said it was three bhk and every room there would be two people sitting so these two were sitting together and this guy from gwalior was always agitated and then one day he became angry on this guy from uh, agra and he ended up beating so uh, they were like he had this gang you know of uh, drug addicts who would come and you know beat this guy from agra they would almost beat him to death with these dumbbells and they would like rip his face off and this guy from agra would not take bath for minimum 10 to 15 days and in chennai heat you would not take bath for 10 to 15 days so imagine the situation and he would always criticize every damn living non living creature he would criticize bill gates he would criticize steve jobs he would criticize you know manmohan singh uh, he would criticize barack obama right so all the time everybody is a villain except him right he would criticize apple products microsoft uh, products you know like nike or he would criticize mcdonalds all the time right so these two were uh, the most uh, tamasic characters that i had, uh, that i had during the uh, hostel days uh, in the first year and they actually uh, forced me to look deep within myself i started asking myself that will there be a day when i will also be like them i started asking myself what if one day i also start doing the things which they are doing now what will be my situation what what kind of a predicament will i be in what a precarious situation will i be in so therefore i was by seeing them i had always heard of what happens when people take drugs or cigarettes uh, alcohol and this guy from agra would not take drugs but he would be very heavily into alcohol and smoking and although smoking was illegal but he would uh, smoke uh, within uh, within the center within our flat itself and nobody would like to have the dare to go and complain so the thing is these people these two inspired me to not be like them they showed me how miserable they were and then i was inspired within by seeing them that if i become like them i'll also be so unhappy miserable stressed depressed messed like them so they inspired me to stay away from all this and then there was a guy uh, uh from rajasthan he would stay in the hall so in the hall two guys would stay a guy from rajasthan and a guy from bihar and this guy from rajasthan he would uh, he would always be very skeptical you know he would be like okay maybe this doesn't work maybe that doesn't work he was an expert in saying no should we go to this restaurant no should you do this no should you do like that no and what should you do only the gods can answer right this person was a typical uh, follower of the neti mentality what is neti mentality neti means neti 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 no 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 right he was also miserable he was also the most miserable person i had seen all these were like competing with each other how who was more miserable at the end of the day and this guy uh, this guy from rajasthan he would very superficially do some worship of uh, hanuman chalisa in the beginning days and eventually within 3 to 4 months he left it and he started uh, roaming with girls and uh, what not anyways and then there was this guy from bihar who used to stay in the hall who was the roommate of this guy from rajasthan and this guy 
was um, he was a very peculiar person. He was a different person. He he was like the epitome of sexuality. <laughs> he was a uh, he was a homosexual, and uh, he uh, it would be very difficult for him to resist nine men together. You know, he really had a tough time managing himself and we really had a tough time managing ourselves from him and uh, this guy would always be into some kind of hidden activity like very weird personality you would follow sai baba sometimes you would follow lord ram sometimes i mean he would speak and he he once had an affair with the wife of a army colonel you know, and he would describe all the love stories you know when he would go and meet this lady when her husband would be away fighting war you know somewhere and i was like wow what a life <laughs> the husband is fighting a war and you you both are indulging wow epic <laughs> so and also, he was very miserable. He was heavily into alcohol and uh, smoking. And then there was a guy with me who used to stay with me. He was my uh, school friend, actually. We used to sit together. He, he is from Assam, but he is, uh, by language, he's a Bihari. So this guy, uh, this Bihari guy, he, um, the uh, earlier the guy from Bihar, he speaks Bihari and he is also from Bihar but this my school friend he has been born and brought up and he stayed in Assam and uh, he spoke Bihari uh, but he was you know very charming and very uh, very he, he was always running behind other women so he would have you know three to four girlfriends at a time parallelly he would have so then I used to observe him also I was like wow <laughs> One woman is not sufficient. You know, he would need three, four, five sometimes. And he would be flirting around all the times. And he was in he was also in an illusory world, you know, like computer games all the time. Either he's with uh cold rings or women or computer games, one of the three, right? <laughs> Drinks, women or computer games, entertainment, wine woman entertainment. That was his motto. And uh, then in the other room, there were two guys. One was from uh, Jharkhand uh, and another was from uh, Hyderabad. So this guy from Jharkhand, he, is, uh, he, he was a very good guy. He was very spiritual and uh, we had started our spiritual life together. And this guy from Hyderabad, he was always talking big, big things, right? Uh, he will do this, he will do that. He will implement this, he will implement that. And he was too much into sports, right? And whenever me and this guy from Jharkhand, we would have some spiritual discussions, this guy would feel bored. He would be like, oh, why are you wasting time in doing all this? You know, he would not say it, but that's how he would feel, right? That's how he would behave as if these spiritual talks and all these are immaterial. These are of no good use, actually. And then the last room, uh, there were two guys. Uh, one was again from Hyderabad. And the other one was from Chennai itself. So this guy from Hyderabad, he uh, he was a very peculiar person, another very peculiar person. He he never knew what he was doing. He was all the time doing something. Suddenly he would appear, suddenly he would disappear. Suddenly he would uh, come in the dead of the night at 2 a.m., 3 a.m. and come to sleep. Or sometimes he would uh, not sleep. Like sometimes he would sleep somewhere else. And there was this last guy from uh, Chennai, Tamil Nadu. Now he, he used to stay there. And uh, he, he was a nice guy, but he would also find spirituality very boring. And he would roam a lot because SRM, the main campus is very near to Chennai, 50 kilometers almost. So he had a lot of Tamilian friends with whom he used to roam. And thereby do sports and so many other things and by that you know uh, things uh, he would also not stay in the apartment for a long time so that's the story of and then there was me of course <laughs> so we uh, this is the story of these 10 people and 
as i said what these people inspired me and then gradually we had some sessions from some you know seniors from a nearby spiritual community and then that's how gradually i started my spiritual life with this guy from jharkhand and that's how our spiritual life began gradually slowly and then in the second year we uh, we both shifted into the ashram where uh, these programs would be held and we would continue our studies from there of course uh, we used to attend the classes but we used to stay there okay classes of srm university of course so uh, the thing is when i saw their lives it was consumed by drugs cigarettes alcohol pornography prostitution also was involved multiple women were involved you know dating uh, indulging in physical relations uh, before marriage physical relationship with not only one more than one and uh, dealing doing secretive things you know just wasting your time with friends and just being materialistic so when i saw the lives of these people they really 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 inspired me to look deep within and see what kind of life do you want so when i saw these people i started asking myself do you also want a life like them and at the end of your life after 70 80 years you just die and you perish so i was very lucky to come into association of great personalities within srm university but unfortunately uh, these the other eight guys me and the friend from jharkhand we were very lucky but unfortunately the others they were not uh, having this inquisitiveness and they could not be benefited out of the spiritual knowledge which we both were and because of that what happened was they eventually went into like very wrong tracks you know they got this year back some of them could not complete their engineering they just left some of them uh, got so many backs that they left in third year fourth year you know and some of them just they just went into oblivion of course one or two uh, they are in good positions now and uh, they are they are working but then again there is no depth of character so the most important lesson that i learned from them is to be in company of good people so five days i used to stay with them and in the weekends i would go to the nearby spiritual communities and associate with people there and learn about the bhagavad gita shrimad bhagavatam ramayan mahabharat all these and then uh, when i would come back sunday night i would be like oh my god i have come to this hell again this place is like hell for me you know and then gradually as second semester started i shift started shifting outside and outside and outside and gradually i shifted to the ashram itself and then from second year which is beginning of third semester everything was in the ashram i did not stay in the hostels so that will be all from my side the biggest realization i got is you you decide your company and your company decides how you will be okay so do not ignore the people around you do not think that you know they are just people keep a watch on them how are they behaving who are they meeting what do they listen to who do they listen to what do they read right who do they meet so you should keep an eye on this and any time you feel somebody is doing things which are not recommended in the scriptures then it, they will end up making you more miserable all right so that will be all from my side thank you very much for your watch time <laughs> if you are new to the channel then please subscribe to it down below and if you want a consultation please uh, go to my website you will also find it down below and yes um, god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him and if you like this video click the thumbs up and share it with some of your friends who are doing bachelors you know engineering especially or medical or anything else all right thank you very much